Costas in height and reach, which could be a factor in the bout as he tries to outbox Costa Zoo. Both have gained about 17 pounds since having weighed in yesterday. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Costa Zoo Diabella Sertano fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using those unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Now, under California law, the referee or the doctor can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to Fantasy Springs Casino here in Indio, California, where tonight America presents, in association with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Championship boxing for your entertainment, sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission and the World Boxing Council. WBC supervisor ringside for this bout is Bobby Lee. Along with America Presents, this first bout is brought to you in association with Main Events and Team Freedom. And now, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Interim Super <laughs> Bout, Lightweight Championship Bout. The winner of this bout will be a mandatory opponent for the vacant world championship. The three judges assigned scoring this contest are Hank Ellis Peru, Anik Hong Tong Kam, and Terry Smith. And when the bell rings, working in his 113th, pardon me, ladies and gentlemen, the referee of this bout is Dr. James Jen Kin. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, white, and blue, weighing 139 and one quarter pounds. He has a professional record of 28 victories, 19 by knockout with only one defeat. He's a native of Cuba who now fights out of Miami, Florida for Team Freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, ranked number five in the world, introducing the Obelis Urtado. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black and weighing 139 pounds. As a professional, he has a record of 21 victories, 17 by knockout with only one loss and one draw. Originally from Cerro, Russia, he now fights out of Sydney, Australia, ranked number two in the world, presenting the former junior welterweight world champion, Kostya Tsu. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. Put it in. Gentlemen, obey my commands. Let's go. This probably is the first time that uh, two direct defectors, one from Russia and one from Cuba, have fought for a title, fighting on Indian land in the desert of Southern California. What a game. What a country. Just to clarify what Michael Buffer said in the introductions there, the winner of this fight will be deemed an interim 140-pound champion by the governing body whose title is at stake, the WBC. They've mandated that whoever wins must fight Miguel Angel Gonzalez in the spring when Gonzalez recovers from his ribcage injury and is presumably going to be healthy enough to fight. Round one begins with the pattern you might expect, which is Costa Zoo coming forward, trying to drive her title back. Which is basically his best option, Jim, because Hurtado is so much taller than he is. Well, the short, stocky guy has to always chase down the tall, thin, fast guy. Hurtado was not regarded as a power puncher coming into the winner. He hurt. Sue's a power puncher, and there's the first knockdown of the bout. I was just about to say, all of a sudden, he is standing delivering instead of hitting and running. And he got nailed. And he'll never get out of this with Costa Zoo, I don't think. Oh, down by the Zoo. Two knockdowns in the first minute, six seconds of the bout. Zoo got careless and walked right in on a punch. Came in to finish him and walked right into a punch. Give her title a lot of credit because he was seriously hurt when he went down. But this is the fight that Zoo wants. 
Zhu wants to trade punches because he's the stronger of the two fighters. But Hurtado has already caught Zhu square on the left eye, or the right eye, and Zhu's right eye is swelling as he goes down for the second time. And I was about to say, Hurtado was not regarded as a puncher before his fight against Whitaker, but he knocked Whitaker down twice and has won six of his last eight by knockdown, by knockout. Remember, there's no three knockdown rule in effect. Pasta Zhu's officially been down twice. He doesn't appear to be hurt, but his right eye is swelling badly already. I've never seen an eye swell as badly as Zhu's eye is swelling so rapidly, unless it was one of Arturo Gatti's eyes. Now these are fast knockdowns that are taking Zhu down. Two more power punches land for Hurtado. Zhu lands one of his own and tries to follow up. We expected Hurtado to try to box, but so far this is a war. I don't understand why Hurtado is fighting this type of a fight. Well, one reason, Roy, is it's an 18-foot ring, which looks even smaller. We thought the ring, with its small dimensions, would create an advantage for Zhu. But it's Hurtado who scored two knockdowns in the first round after Zhu started things off by knocking Hurtado down with his first power punch land. And Hurtado gets belted in the mouth as round one comes to a close. What a tumultuous opening frame. About as good as it gets. Explain to him. He's winning the fight. He can do anything he wants with this guy. But he's got to find his way. He's got a jab. He's got to move. Get a jab. Get a jab. You, you need to use your jab. Your jab is what's going to keep your distance. Here you saw in the opening seconds as Hurtado stood in front of Zhu, catching a right hand followed by a left and another right. Came in to finish Hurtado off and almost got finished in return. That looked like more of a slip than a punch, but it was a knockdown by, as counted by the referee. Three knockdowns in the first round. Now, Zoo is definitely the fresher of the two fighters now. But look at his right eye, Roy. Great work. Look at the mouse under Zoo's right eye. It's as big around as a quarter. Won't affect him as long as he doesn't run into any, any big punches, Jim. All right. But he needs to get this fight over with because it's going to swell worse as the fight goes on. He had Hurtado in trouble at the end of the first round. It looks as though Costa's corner has told him to work to the body a little bit. Tato sneaks in a left hook. Sue comes back with a body punch, followed by a right hand shot over the top. Well, in two rounds in a row, the last one with Phillips and this one, Zoo has been knocked down three times. <laughs> And you wonder whether he can still take a punch, Roy, or whether some, somehow that knockout is still some in his in his mind. Big punches usually are susceptible to big big uh, to weak chance. They don't take the punch that they give. Yeah, but it, it, this is not to say that Zhu hasn't had a fight since the Phillips fight. That was made. No, 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 right. He's had three fights. He's had since three fights time. since then, including his brutal beating of Rafael Ruelas four months ago. One problem he has is that he's standing straight up in front of uh, Hurtado. That's why Hurtado can hit him with the right hand, because he's not showing any side-to-side -side hit movement. So when he cuts down the pipe, he's coming straight forward, running right into that right hand. Pastor Zhu fought two Cubans as amateurs. Neither was Hurtado. He lost both of his fights with Cubans and believes that he should have won them both, but that he lost on political scoring. So he saw this, among other things, as a chance for revenge against Cuban fighters. slowing a little bit as round two comes to a close. Now he's tipping the punches a little bit. Sue digging that left hook to the body. And continuing to look for opportunities upstairs. Hurtado still seemingly on wobbly legs, but fighting his way through it and landing 
counter shots. The reason I said this is the type of fight that Zoo wants is because the Cuban guys have been a long time fighting just three rounds. It's more difficult for them to adjust to this long style of a fight than it is for Zoo. Big left hook lands for Hurtado. Has to Zoo backs up for a moment. Well, both of them, Roy, had long amateur careers, and both of them have had more than 20 professional fights. Chances at all, mate. Just be intelligent. You, you gotta throw your hands. You gotta move also. You gotta keep moving. Keep off the ropes and out of the corners. Don't stand in the corner. You gotta keep moving. Beautiful, beautiful. Smart, 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 smart. Okay. Bossel, no te puedes Radio Marti broadcasting back to Cuba tonight. So Cubans who are listening to the Radio Marti network, which is programmed out of the United States to Cuba, can follow the progress of Diabelis Hurtado, a former member of the Cuban national amateur team and a member of the 10-man contingent now called Team Freedom. All of them Cuban defectors fighting as professionals here in the USA. He's one of the three big stars of that team, along with Ramon Garbet and Joel Casamayor. Wild right hand just misses for Hurtado. Castazu. Badly swollen under the right eye, but not yet affecting his vision. As he drives forward and looks to land power shots. This is not the same Hurtado who was on a bicycle for most of the time he was fighting Cornell Whitaker. He was trying to become more of a professional fighter. So far, he's done pretty well at it. Two knockdowns to one. I think he feels like his power is good enough to knock uh, Costa Zoo out, so he's taking a chance at going for the knockout tonight. And I don't think that's what Lou Duva wants him to do, but of course, Duva faces the translation problem of trying to tell Hurtado in English through an interpreter what he wants him to do between rounds. For Zoo. <laughs> Hurtado seems to have found his balance now midway through round three and is taking Zoo's power shots with a little bit more self assurance. Is Hurtado making a mistake but not trying to exploit the left? The right eye of Zoo Roy. Yeah, he's made a mistake because the longer this fight goes, the better it is for Zoo. Good left hook for Hurtado. He's able to counter after Zoo's power shot. Zoo's so confident of his power that he doesn't bring his hands back up after he lands. No, he doesn't. He leaves his head right there in one spot. You would have thought that Zoo might have learned his lesson against Fitz Phillips about the importance of defending himself. No, because his whole career he lived on the knockout punches, Jim. Once you make yourself a knockout puncher, you never learn to defend again because you always have so much confidence in that ability to knock people out. Well, that's certainly Costa's mindset. And that's why he's been down here two times already. I think her title is getting weaker, though. Hurtado has looked from the beginning as though he really doesn't have his legs under him. Now, as you pointed out, he was trained for the fight two weeks ago, and he trained right on through. Why would he have any difficulty with conditioning? He shouldn't. Well, I think he caught some really hard punches early in the first round, and that tends to put some lead in your legs. Cost, we've got to keep the defense up. He's right in. He's trying to bring his onto it. Get him on the road, smash everything into his body, okay? Cross is starting to tire a little bit. <coughs> Pretty good, mate. Yeah. 
I still need to get a shot away on us again, mate, okay? The short stocky guy comes through with a straight right hand. The tall, thin guy looking to counter. In that same sequence, Zoo is wide open. Round four of a scheduled 12. Harold, how'd you score it through the first three? Well, Jim, so far I got a 1-1-1, 29-29. to 29. I'll be honest with you, that first round was a tricky round. Even though Hurtado had an extra knockdown, Castazu finished so strong, you had to give him a point for finishing stronger, and therefore I scored it even. But in the second round, I thought Hurtado won it on hand speed. The third round, I thought Castazu pulled it out with the harder right hand. So one, one, and one, all even so far. I had the same score, except I gave Zu the second round and Hurtado the third round. And while you may look at the first three rounds and say, well, this one isn't going to go the distance, so the scores are academic, very often the fights that begin with fireworks end with chess games. <laughs> I don't think this will end in a chess game. It may end in I'm not sure there's a chess player in there. Yeah, it may end in failing fireworks, but not a chess game. Punch it out! Punch it out! Now, Kostasu is doing one thing very smart. He's going through the body a little more now, but he left himself very open after he threw, out, after he threw that out. power combination just now. And had Hurtado landed the punches that he threw, he would have knocked him down again, I think. Yeah, Costa just doesn't look as though he's ever going to lose that habit of dropping his hands after he lands a power shot. And that's what I think uh, Hurtado is trying to capitalize on. If you can duck or slip and counter back immediately, you've got a shot. You get surprises in the desert, can fry your brains out during the day, and at this time of year, it can freeze your cactus at night. And we're seeing a surprise in how this fight is going, an action fight. Nobody could be sure that's what we would get. Potato just doesn't seem strong on his legs, you know? He always seems to be partially off balance or something. Boy, Costa Zoo landed a crushing body shot in that exchange. But he's still so straight up, Jim. It's always easily hitting back. Hurtado just not firing back with nearly the same mustard now. I think the body shots have taken away the snap in Hurtado's punches. I think they have, too. first couple of rounds, when Hurtado was able to counter, it was serious. Now he tends to paw with his counter punches. Still to come tonight, Hunter's first fight since last December 19, when he was knocked down in the third round by Junior Jones, and then came back to knock Jones out in the fourth. Okay, let, let's get the towel there. Let, listen, uh, you need to stay away from him. Don't get in too close with him. And watch out for his right hand. He's too powerful. You need to move. You need to move. You need to use those jabs. On the inside. Our interpreter is Ray Torres in the Spanish-speaking corner. can't let him get a shot on us. All the good words are going to be nullified. Lou Duva threw in the words Muhammad Ali somewhere in there, trying to get her title to move more, from, as you see him trying now, but he definitely looks the weaker of the two fighters right now. And I think if he moves much more, he's going to give Costa too much confidence. But that would be the perfect way to fight a short, power guy like Costa Zoo. Copy box numbers in round four. The first 
serious differential in punch output as Sue threw 66 punches and a slowing Hurtado through only 49 in the fourth round. If Hurtado begins to fade, Costa Zoo will try to simply pile drive through him. If, if Hurtado had thrown a powerful hook just there, he would knock Costa out because Costa was just standing straight up in front of him. I don't think he has a powerful hook left, although he lands an uppercut there that drives Costa back. That's a powerful hook, Jim. Yep. And more body shots from Zoo. Trying to bring Hurtado's hands down and set up another right-hand shot. Sue is very strong with the left hook to the body and the right up top. Straight right hand. Tries to drive it through Hurtado's guard there. Hurtado trying to counter again. Sue should keep going to the body more, though. Yeah, I agree. He's most effective when he sets everything up with that powerful left hook to the body. And his opponent is looking very weak now anyway. The body shots will keep him looking weak. Trickle of blood from the nose of Hurtado as Costa Zoo just stalks yeah. and stalks and whacks away. You can see in this round why Zoo was so highly regarded before he lost to Vince Phillips. Oh, good body shot. That's when he hurts you. That's when he hurts you right there. You should keep going to the body. There you go. There you go. And Hurtado goes down as the result of the left hook to the body. And it was a very conscious decision on his part to take a rest. Hey, you okay? All right. This has been a very punishing fifth round for Hurtado at the hands of Costa Zoo. Another knockdown again on the left hook to the body. That's it. A brave fight for Hurtado. An outstanding performance by Costa Zoo. The thing is, Larry, what I was saying about the guys, the Cubans not going the distance, most amateur boxers fight amateur looking forward to a professional career. So we train to go more than just the three rounds. The Cubans, however, always train for that three round period. So they don't learn that as kids to be prepared for a professional fight one day. So you're saying that even as an amateur, you were training for longer distance? Most longer definitely, distance. most definitely. Amateur boxing is just a prelim for us, like uh, the American fighters. We all look to that as just a way of catapulting us into an excellent professional career. And you spend the, all your lives knowing that someday you're going to fight more than three rounds. You're going to have to. And the Cubans are thinking of getting to the Olympics. And that's it for them. Great point. Great point, Roy. We've been talking for years about what a great heavyweight Teofilo Stevenson was, but we never know what he would have done in 12-round fights as opposed to three-round fights. Now let's look back at some replays of the closing action as Costa Zoo closed the show by outlanding Hurtado 39 to 8 down the stretch. Zoo landing 39 of the last 47 landed punches in the bout. Zoo came into the round looking stronger, and those two body punches made him a lot stronger. Another one down goes Hurtado. And there's the second knockdown, and again, you saw the left hook to the body was critical in the exchange. There's that swollen right eye for Costa, but it never was a factor in the fight. No, I knew it wouldn't be a factor because Hurtado was going to weaken. Costa was the power puncher. And... and now let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes 35 seconds of round number 5. The winner, and now WBC Interim Super Lightweight World Title Holder, Kostya Tsu! I caught a glimpse of the official scorecards, which showed that two of three judges had Costa Su ahead in the bout, despite the fact that you'll recall in round number one, Hurtado was able to knock Su down twice 
after Costa Sue had opened the fight by knocking her title down in the very first minute. Final punch stat numbers, and there was a large edge in power punches for Zhu. He outlanded her title by 69 blows anyway, throwing 50 more, landing 69 more, thus the big difference in connect percentage. But the the greater uh, portion of that differential came in the power punch category as Zhu was simply able to land his hooks, his crosses, his uppercuts, pretty much at will, as you can see, landing nearly 50% of them. The left hook to the body, particularly devastating once he stuck to it in the fifth round. Larry Merchant stands by with the winner. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Kasu. You have another belt. But in that first round, after you belted him, he belted you back. Were you shocked? It's a stupid thing for me. I remember I told in the press conference that I'm rushing always too much. I'm from Russia, I'm rushing too much. And I have to calm down myself, don't rush, because he's a great puncher. And in a split second, I forgot about but this. You, you thought you could end the fight right then and there, and you came in wide open. Yeah, probably this way. And who knows what's happened in the first round in my mind. But now I've got a belt. This is the more important. Were you surprised that Hurtado stand and fought, stood and fought with you rather than running from you? It doesn't matter if you have to run. You have to stop to punch. And it doesn't matter. We'll wait for this opportunity for all night. Still, if you can't run and punch same time. And when he stop, you have to punch. have to fight me and uh, I'm waiting for this opportunity or like this you just stood in front of me and fought. All right. Next you're mandated to have to fight Miguel Angel Gonzalez. Yes. And would you then fight if you win that fight a rematch with Vince Phillips. We'll see. We'll see. First of all this one is meant to defense of course against uh, Gonzalez. It's uh, I mean I, I, I'd love to fight Phillips. I'd love to fight Phillips. For him, it's going to be a great opportunity because I've got one belt, he's got another belt, and which belongs to me. And uh, Which used to belong to you. Used to belong, exactly right. But I believe in a condition like today, I'll uh, going to be show the great fight. Just one last thing. Your eye began to puff up in the very first minute yeah. of the first round. Were you aware of it and aware of the danger of it? It's a scratch. And I'm the, I'm the man, I'm the boxer. I don't care about this kind of thing. Oh, look, look good right now. And uh, to be world champion without scratch is probably not fair. And I'm very proud to back home with a belt, with a little bit of scratching and... Uh, with so you're saying, you're saying that that mouse under your eye is a badge of honor? Oh, it's an enjoyable, enjoyable part of be world champion. Thank you very much, Kasia. Jim?